Hello, welcome to In the English Corner. In today's video, I would like to discuss the role of parallel structure in your writing. Parallel structure is a strategy that is needed to add coherence to your writing. Parallel structure helps your audience maintain focus while reading your writing. It also unifies your thoughts and it adds emphasis to your writing as well as providing rhythm and smoothness to your ideas. And this, you must remember, is a basic characteristic of good, strong writing. Parallel structure makes a series of words, thoughts, phrases, or clauses balanced. So it adds balance to your ideas and to your entire sentence. And parallelism refers to the expression of two or more ideas in matching parallel form. So let's look at some examples, and this will make it a little bit easier to follow what exactly parallel structure is. In the first example, I enjoy boxing, dancing, and to go swimming. If you look at this example, you've got the ing verb. I enjoy boxing, dancing, and then you say to go swimming. So this is not parallel. To make it parallel, you'd say, I enjoy boxing, dancing, and swimming. No need to say to go. Now it's parallel. The next example, clothes were over the chairs, under the bed, and the floor was covered. This is not parallel. You've got over, under, and then you say the floor was covered. So to make it parallel, each phrase has to begin with a preposition. So you'd say clothes were over the chairs, under the bed, and on the floor. Now it's parallel. Another example, the boss said she was honest, competent, and she was willing to work hard. This is not parallel. You're using uh, adjectives to describe the person, she. She's honest is one adjective, she's competent is another, and now you're throwing off uh, the parallelism of the sentence by saying she was willing to work hard. So to make a parallel, you would say the boss told her she was honest, competent, and you'd switch was willing to work hard and say hardworking. So now they're all adjectives to describe she, and now it's parallel. So let's take a look at when it's important to use parallel structure in your writing. The first rule is you use parallel form when you're presenting items in a series. So if it's a list of items, you must use parallel format. Take a look at this example. On the weekend, Francine enjoys jogging in the park, going to the movies, and she likes to read her favorite magazines. This is not parallel. Reason being, she enjoys jogging in the park, you've got the ING, going to the movies, but now you say she likes to read her favorite magazine. This part of the sentence is not parallel right here. So to turn it parallel, you'd say, on the weekend, Francine enjoys jogging in the park, going to the movies, and you'd switch this and say reading her favorite magazine. So jogging and going are ing verbs. Like to read is not parallel, so you must turn this into another ing verb, and now it becomes parallel. This next example, my boss has a kind voice, a gentle manner, and a disposition that is not that and a disposition, sorry, that is very sweet. This is not parallel. You're describing the boss. And this is an adjective, this is a noun, kind voice, gentle manner, adjective noun. But now you're throwing off the balance by saying a disposition that is very sweet. So to make it parallel and to follow the adjective noun order, you'd say my boss has a kind voice, a gentle manner, and the third item to make it parallel would be a sweet disposition. So now you've got the full balance in your sentence. The next example, lunch at my favorite restaurant consisted of chef salad, fried chicken, and potatoes that were mashed. In this sentence, you've got 
chef salad, the adjective, the noun, fried chicken, adjective is fried, chicken is the noun, but the part that's not parallel is right here, potatoes that were mashed. So in order to make this parallel and to turn it into the adjective noun format, you'd say lunch at my favorite restaurant consisted of chef salad, fried chicken, and now mashed potatoes. So you've got the balance in the sentence. A second use of parallel structure is when pairs of ideas are linked with connecting words. Let's take a look at some of these connecting words. Examples would be and or in a sentence, either or, neither nor, or not only but also. Again, let's look at examples. It makes it clearer to follow. The first one that I've given you is hot weather makes people irritable and say things that cause arguments. This part of the sentence, say things that cause arguments, is not parallel. And I've shown you two ways that you can correct the sentence. One, hot weather makes people, and just give the two adjectives. It makes them irritable and it makes them argumentative. Or another way to correct it is you could say hot weather makes people irritable and, and you could repeat makes and turn it into another sentence, basically another full thought. It makes them say things that cause arguments. So the two ideas are joined by the coordinating word and they're of equal importance in the sentence, so they must be in parallel format. And these are the two ways to correct it. I've given you another example. Susan normally either washes the floor or she's cleaning her car on the weekends. You've got the either or. Here you're saying she either washes, you have the ES verb, or she is cleaning. That's not parallel. So to turn it parallel, you have to have the same format of the verb. Susan normally either washes the floor or cleans her car on the weekend. Now it's parallel. And yet a final example for this rule, with these vegetables are not only very colorful, but also have a fresh taste. So you're saying not only, but not parallel. Uh, because one is saying colorful, and then you're saying they have a fresh taste. So to make it parallel, you'd say these vegetables are not only colorful, but they're also very fresh. So you're using the two adjectives to describe the vegetables, and now it becomes parallel. And now let's take a look at the, th the third and final use of parallel structure. Parallelism must be used when you're making comparisons using the words than or as. You have to have equality or balance with these words. So when you're comparing two things, which you often are doing in different forms of writing, they must be written in parallel form. Please let's look at these examples. Eating fruits and vegetables is much healthier than to snack on chips and cookies. So there's your contrast with that, than, you're comparing or contrasting two things. So to correct it, this is not parallel because you're saying eating fruits and vegetables is healthier than, and now you're saying to snack, but you're not saying to eat. You've got the ing verb and then to snack. To turn it parallel, you'd say eating fruits and vegetables is much healthier than snacking on chips and cookies. So you've got both formats of the verb in ing. And another contrast statement is in this example, it is easier to do your homework right after school than leaving it until after dinner. Than shows you it's a comparison. So you're saying it's not parallel because you're saying to do, the verb to do here, but now this part's the ing verb. So it's not parallel. To make a parallel, you'd say it is easier to do your homework right after school than to leave it until after dinner. Or you could have said it is easier, easy, easier doing your homework right after school than leaving it. So either both verbs are in ing or both could be to do, to leave, but it has to be parallel. They have to be in the same format. So to conclude, please remember that parallelism, which is the same as parallel structure, is an effective way to add smoothness to your writing. It makes it clear and it will make your uh, you're writing much easier for your reader to understand because it maintains the balance in your sentence. 
Many famous speeches and literary writings use skillful parallelism. It makes your writing polished and certainly much more memorable. Thank you very much. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye.